Okay, so finally, at the end of this chapter, I would call it a little bit boring, but it, that doesn't mean that it's not important. Anyway, uh, at the end of this chapter, just a short lesson. There is a coma operator, and there are some dangers that are inherent with it, so we need to be careful with that. So, let's go ahead and do this. If, and we can, should probably uh, declare x and y, so int x, I don't know, equals one, uh, I don't know, two, and y shall be equal to mm, three, okay. So, for example, if we state that x is greater than Four. By the way, in case I didn't mention, you could also declare variables like this, like just in ten in one line. You can declare as many as you want. Uh, also, you can go into next line, uh, but I've shown that. So if x is greater than four, and then you put a comma, and then you say y is greater than one. Uh, now you shall go ahead and type in std colon colon c out. Something, I don't know. Tra -la 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 -la. STD colon and L semicolon. So this is not what the user imagined in the first place. This will actually be true. So X is greater than four and Y is greater than one. But uh, I mean, that is as it as it should be, but I've I've seemed to have placed some pretty bad values. But anyway, what I wanted to tell you is that whenever y, for example, greater than one is true, regardless of the value x. So this will this will actually be true regardless of the x. The entire the entire the entire expression will evaluate the true. I will show that to you in a moment when I change the values. So comma operator evaluates everything from left to right and then returns the and then returns the result of the last evaluation. So let's say that x is greater than four. Okay, is two greater than four? No, it is not. Y is equal to three. So is three greater than one? Yes, it is, but there is a comma. But not both of these conditions have been satisfied. And if I, it's going to print out onto the screen. If I run this, it says something dot, dot, dot. So it evaluates the true, but perhaps not the way you thought it would. It goes from left to right, so it does that. But then it only takes the last segment, the last thing that was evaluated, and based upon that makes its conclusion. That's like the rest doesn't matter. So that, that's, one of the, that's one of the dangers of the coma operator. It can be very trick. It can be it can be a cause of logical errors. Anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at an example that will also print out something. Because I don't know, we will set the y to equal to to I don't know. Uh, let's say to five, and that is going to also be greater than one. And I don't know, we don't actually need to change anything else. It doesn't really matter. I didn't probably didn't need to even change this, but due to my notes, I did. Now, if we go ahead and type something like this in, two is greater than four. Yes? No, of course not. Two is not greater than four. And if we state that y is greater than one, this will still evaluate the true because y is greater than one. And this will again be printed out onto the screen. Let me just go ahead and show you due to the way it is evaluated. The correct way of doing this would be to remove comma from this completely and use an and percent and percent sign depending on what you want to do. So when I run this, this is now not going to get printed out onto the screen as you can see here. Uh, because this condition is false and this one is true and both need to be true for the and 
to be evaluated as true in in a for this entire expression for this entire condition to be evaluated as true because for and you have tables online you can find them if you want for and I want like this for, ah is it capsule con yes and you need true true is evaluates the true uh true false false will evaluate to false i don't know again there's the third and final one so i'll oh, actually not the final one false false true will be false as well and of course false false will be false so if both if 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 you have true true then it's true if you have true false then it's false if it's false true then it's false and so on and so forth so you can find these tables on the net for and for not for or etc for as many of them as you want so here we have uh false and true and and percent sign here meaning that this condition will be evaluated to this will be this will be evaluated to false and therefore this will not be printed out onto the screen so just wanted to make a quick tutorial by the end of this and show you and show you how this actually works well there was just one more uh, small thing that I want to show, but I don't actually need to write any code for it. I can just write pseudocode so you can see it. If I type in, for example, if, and I don't know, some condition A here, and if I type in some code, okay, some code. If I type in else down below, I can, I don't know, else if actually I can also type in I don't know, some condition B and I open them up. So in here where some code goes, I can also place another if statement. I can also place another else statement or I can place another series of else if statements. And I can nest them in one another as much as I want. So if I type in if, for example, C and then some some code again. Uh, else, if I don't know, not C whatever. You can type in again. Ah, some code, etc. So you see, you can nest them as much as you want, pretty much, as many conditions as you need to test out, you can test out in this fashion without any, without any problems, really. In fact, once we get to, like, complex code writing and complex programming, to advanced programming techniques, you will see that we will deal with a lot of nesting of, I don't know, loops, conditions, etc. But until then, I bid you farewell and a ton load of luck. I shall see you hopefully in the next chapter.